Today, in the Novice Corner, we're going to discuss making copies or clones of lists. This is a common issue that you may or may not have yet encountered. This typically rears its head in your program running without any exceptions, but the result is different to that intended. The concepts are fundamental in writing code that does what you want it to. Let's get started. Here we have a list containing three strings, Daisy, Isabel, and Sarah. We want to make a new list of names, which starts off identical to our original list, but which we can then alter to be slightly different. A common but flawed way of doing this is by assigning new list of names to list of names, as we've done on line two. When we print both, it looks like we're on to a good start. As a result, we go on, on line 4, to take our new list of names and append the string Olivia to it. What's then strange is that when we print both lists, the change seems to have been made to both of them. Our original list somehow has the change that we made to our new list. So what's going on? Well, assignment never copies data, and what we have on line 2 is an assignment. When we wrote line 1, what we did was create an object, the object being the list of those three strings, and we had list of names pointing to that object. When we made the assignment on line 2, we created a new name point to the same object as we had on line 1. Throughout this, there is only one object, therefore if we make a change to that object, the change will be visible to any name that's pointing to it. So we made a change, the change being appending the string Olivia, and we made that change to the object that new list of names is pointing to. Because list of names, because that's pointing to the same object, when we print it, we're going to see that change. Great, but that still leaves our original problem. How do we make a copy of our original list? There are many ways of doing so, and I'll take you through them so that you feel more confident when confronted by them in other people's code. But you'll come to rely on only a couple of ways of making copies. Lists now have their own copy method. You'll note that the doc string mentioned something about a shallow copy. Let's park what that means just momentarily. Another way is to take a full slice of the original. You'll be aware that you can take a slice with this notation. The first number is the starting index, inclusive. The second number is the end index, not inclusive. So for example, naught 2 here will return the names from index naught up to, but not including, index 2. If you leave the first number blank, it gives a slice from the start of the list all the way up to, but not inclusive, of the end digit supplied. If you leave the end digit blank, then it's from the start digit all the way to the end of the list. If you leave both blank, then you get the entire list. You can also accomplish the same thing by passing the list through the list constructor, but it's a tad less efficient. Now let's consider shallow and deep copies as promised. We'll define our own person class and overload the wrapper operator so that the name is returned whenever the instance name is entered by itself. We've imported the copy built-in module, which has two main functions, copy, which makes a shallow copy, and deep copy, which makes a deep copy. To illustrate the difference, we've made an instance of our class with the name Olivia. We have the same list of names as before, but we've added our instance on at the end. We make a shallow copy, and we also make a deep copy. It's only at this point that we realize that we forgot to make the first letter in Olivia an uppercase one. So we then make the change to our instance. Let's see what we have. The original has what we would expect, namely, our instance at the end with the uppercase O. Our shallow copy is the same. Looking at our deep copy, on the other hand, Olivia still has the lowercase O. You'll note that we made our copies before changing the lowercase O to an uppercase one. A shallow copy only copies the list itself, which is a container of references to the objects in the list. If the objects contain themselves are mutable, and one is changed, 
The change is then reflected in both lists, both the original and the shallow copy. They're both pointing at the same objects. A deep copy, on the other hand, copies both the list and also makes copies of the items contained within that list. So here, our deep copy made a copy of our person instance as well. The alteration of the first letter of Olivia on line 15 only applies to that object. At no point did we change the copy of Olivia that the deep copy made. So that's why the deep copy has a lowercase first letter and has not reflected the change that we made. To finish off, we can see which of our methods of copying give shallow copies and which give deep copies. As you can see, all the methods give shallow copies apart from deep copy itself. There are a few extra ways of providing list shallow copies, but knowing the principles explained in this tutorial is most important. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I continue to appreciate the support from you all and welcome feedback as always. Look out for better, clearer and fuller animations forming more of a part of future tutorials. Please let me know in the comments section if you find that these help or if they hinder your progress. Thank you and take care.